This is Twit. Now, I have a story, <laughs> interestingly, about how my monitor behind me used to have VRR support and have it turned on, and now it does not. Uh, and it's related to HDMI. So let's dive into that. And this will all fit together. You'll see. You will see. So there was this week, just a couple of days ago, something that was not not really on my radar. I've talked to I have had this conversation about, you know, DisplayPort versus HDMI and why DisplayPort is better and, and didn't pay a whole lot of attention to it because, hey, I've got the big TV and it says it's running 120 hertz and it's running VRR. It's running 4K. All of the boxes, HDR, even all of the boxes that I cared about were checked. Um, there was one thing that irritated me about the the it's a behind me. I have for those that are not watching, I have an LG C2 47 inch OLED TV. Very nice. Mm, very nice. Um, it has all the bells and whistles. The one thing about it that irritates irritated me is that on a black background, something like red text and sometimes a blue text was hard to read. And I always just sort of chalk that up to it must be something about it being a TV. I have it plugged in with HDMI because TV only has HDMI for whatever reason. They do not put DisplayPort in televisions. I wish they would. So HDMI has different versions. It has there is HDMI 2.0. There's HDMI 2.1 with 2.1. You can push more bandwidth to be able to do more pixels faster, essentially. To be able to do a true 4K, 120 FPS, you've got to be right at full. So the, the, the key, one of the keys here is color gamut. You have to be using HDMI 2.1. If you're using HDMI 2.0, yes, it can push 120 hertz at 4K, but your color gamut gets reduced. And so the, the, the kind of the key term in here, one of them at least, is it's four colon four colon four versus a color gamut of four colon two colon two, which essentially means that they compress some of the colors down, which is why sometimes red and blue may be difficult to read on a black background. Come to find out. There are some test images that you can grab that will demonstrate whether or not you have this issue. And uh, I will try to get a link to those in the show notes. So. The news that broke this week is that AMD, with their open source driver, has been working with the HDMI forum, and that's the trade group that controls HDMI, about a way to allow open source users, those of us running Linux, running the open source AMD drivers, to actually enable HDMI 2.1. Because technically speaking, it's ready to go. It's like it's like literally just a switch to be flipped somewhere in the code for this to happen. Uh, probably, probably a patch uploaded, but it, they, they've made it work. They have the patch. If they got legal to sign off on it, they could ha it could happen right away. Um, the HDMI forum looked at their proposed solution and said, nah, we're not going to let you do that because you've got to, you've got to pay us uh, like $10,000 $10, per, per model that uses HDMI 2.1 or whatever it is. So we, uh, your open source solution, nope, we're not going to sign off on it. And uh, that appears to be the final word. So Linux users are now limited to HDMI 2.0 if you are running the, an open source driver, particularly the open source AMD driver. Closed source NVIDIA, of course, they've got another way to handle this. It's not a problem. Um, I think Intel has a closed source blob that makes this work. I don't know for sure. I've seen some reports that on Intel it's working. So for those of us in Camp AMD, the one of the solutions is to get a dongle. <laughs> Such a funny word um, that plugs in to DisplayPort and then will spit out HDMI 2.1 out of the other end of it. And enough time has happened that this is broken and I have invested in one of those and it does improve the color rendering. It seems that I can now read the red and the blue colors on the black background, which is nice. A um, couple of other things. It looks to the image just looks a little tiny bit better. Unfortunately, with the dongle, I no longer have variable refresh rate. It blocks that. 
So I am maybe in the market for a better converter. I don't know. I, I don't think it's impossible. I think it's just not working with that particular converter. But that is the that is the sad saga of HDMI 2.1 on my big TV. Yeah, yeah I saw that story too. Uh, I was going to put a much different twist on it. I don't have the quite experiences <laughs> you, you had, but my twist on this story was uh, I think it's time we uh, dump HDMI as an industry and uh, find a replacement, which, you know, display port I mean, very display well port could be it. Now, <laughs> though, one of the things HDMI has that display port doesn't, which usually doesn't matter for, for computers, is but is audio. Um, you can I, you can do audio over DisplayPort. It works. Um, but you cannot do, um, I forget the term. It's where you run audio the other direction down the, you can do it down an HDMI arc. cable. Yes, ARC. Uh, thank you. Um, there is on an ARC sort of solution for DisplayPort. Um, you talk about what's going to replace HDMI. And I tell you, the place, <laughs> you, you don't realize it, but the place where there's a lot of buy-in for DisplayPort is actually USB-C. Uh, if you oh. run video over USB-C, that is usually DisplayPort alt mode, not HDMI. So, I mean, it's there. And the, the problem, though, is you can buy. So if you, if you want a, a nice, like, gaming monitor, like, 4k 120 hertz oled hdr like you have those boxes to check and like i did your options are you pay a little under a thousand dollars for a tv or you pay like two and a half thousand dollars for a gaming monitor um mm -hmm. the gaming monitor is going to have display port on it the tv is just going to have hdmi etc what's kind of crazy about that is i'm sure they have to pay uh the hdmi forum to have the HDMI on there, you know, yeah. maybe if they, they realized, uh, <laughs> oh, I'm sure an alternative do. would be better or cheaper for them. Well, you you can't you can, there's just there's just in the market right now you cannot make a TV and not put HDMI ports on it. I mean, there's so many things that just would not you couldn't plug it in. So yeah, I, but I they could see. start to they could start to steer the market by including you know an alternative port and and yes. you know. Yes, I, I would. I would way. love to see display ports on TVs. That would make me very happy. So but with really this, I just wanted to ask and confuse things even further. With the two, HDMI 2.1, is this all? This is also affecting, I'm assuming, 2.1a and 2.1b. Yes, yes. Any anything that is 2.1 or later. Yeah, anything 2.1 or later. Yeah. Yep. And it's and I would primarily add, you know, because it's not in the public domain yet. Yeah, so there's a you know there's a consortium, but they have the trademark and the patents and all of that. It's 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 MPEG LA all over again with MP3. And am I correct in assuming the cable itself isn't what matters? It's the ports on the devices. Well, you have to have you have to have a cable that is up to the spec as well um, to be able to run that much bandwidth through it. But generally speaking, yeah, it's it's so ev everything in the chain has to support 2.1 to be able to get 2.1. Um, it'll 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 fall it'll auto negotiate down to the lowest common no greatest common denominator, um, and use that. So, so 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 like maybe what Ken's getting at. I mean, which part of it do they own? Is it the protocol? Is it just having a port that shape? Could could we like just build something else over top of that and and replace it without replacing hardware? I don't know. Probably not. I mean, uh, about the about the only way that I, you can do that is use the. Um, use one of those one of those dongles to be able to do a conversion from mm. display port over to hdmi and there th to answer your question rob i want to say it's hdmi owns the specification you yeah. have to license it to even create uh, well so here, here's what here's what they own like without even looking this up i can tell you here's what they own they have a trademark on the term hdmi they may have a trademark on the shape of the hdmi they almost certainly have a patent on the shape of the hdmi port but they also have a whole bunch of other patents on the technology that makes hdmi work 
And so the, what, what they have done, it's the exact same thing that you see in audio video codecs. What they have done is they have tried to create a minefield, a legal minefield, that if you try to build something that is close to what they are building, you are stepping into their minefield and their lawyers are going to find a place where, oh, you stepped on one of our patents and they're going to come try to blow you up. And they, what they, their, their entire technique is it would be cheaper for you to just pay us the licensing fee. We're such good people. We want you to pay us the license fee. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I wonder, and it's probably part of that legal minefield, but, you know, if you already have a computer with HDMI, go into a, a TV with HDMI, could somebody, I know technically probably somebody could come along, build a DisplayPort driver or a driver using like DisplayPort technologies and protocols mm -hmm. over that HDMI uh, hardware. <laughs> yeah i don't I, I don't i don't think that's really a possibility from what i understand because it's always it's always going to be expecting an hdmi signal and if you try to well you try to reverse implement that you're going to be running afoul of their patents and there's none, none of the mainstream distros are willing to ship that kind of code so ubuntu ubuntu likes to do stuff like that <laughs> canonical <laughs> well, keep keep in mind too. I mean, you've got the uh, was it HPCD the heart or something like that the hardware or copy protection, so you can't intercept the signal and you know steal movies. And you got you know with all the licensing and stuff, they're never going to open it up because it's too it's it's a cash cow. Though I would argue anymore, the difference between a monitor and a TV is pretty narrow. So you could get it just a big monitor and use it as a TV, mm -hmm. other than the, the extreme. Uh, sizes but yeah price and the price uh, getting, a, getting a computer monitor yeah. that big is just ridiculously <clears throat> expensive hey did you enjoy the show but wish you could be just a little bit more plugged into it want to chat with us on discord live while the show is being made see our bright and smiling faces rather than being stuck with audio only you need to check out club twit at only seven dollars a month it is a real steal you get access to the club twit discord all of the shows ad free video for this show and more goodness it's worth it twit.tv slash club twit go check it out <laughs> <laughs>